Hello and welcome to another X-Ray Tech video. I'm Tom Nasser, the Automation Alchemist, and today I'm gonna to show you how to automate Harvest with Make, formerly known as Integromat. Automatically creating projects, tasks, and clients in Harvest is a great addition to any onboarding workflow. It will help you save some time and make your onboarding process much more consistent. In this video, I'll give you an overview of what you can automate in Harvest with Make and show you an example of a scenario that you could build. Let's get started. Nearly anything you can do in Harvest can be automated in Make. If we open up Make and create a Harvest module, we can see a huge list of options for creating and editing data. We can work with clients, contacts, projects, invoices, expenses, time entries, and users. And if the action you want to automate isn't listed here, it's most likely covered by the last option, make an API call. With an API call module, you can query Harvest's API to perform any action that the API allows. It takes a little more work than using the pre-built modules, but you can easily find the information you need to set up this module in Harvest's API docs. And in the rare cases that your actions aren't supported by the API module either, you can always create an HTTP request to automate an action. But for the vast majority of cases, the pre-built modules and API calls will be all that you need. Now, I'm gonna walk you through building an example scenario that automates some Harvest actions in Make. This scenario will take data from Airtable and use it to create a new client and a new project associated with that client. Then, we'll add a little conditional logic to the scenario so it can either find an existing client or create a new one as needed. First, you'll need to get some data for your scenario to work with. In our example, we'll use an Airtable base, but you could use a CRM or any other data source you prefer. This Airtable view shows new projects recently added to the base. Make will watch this view and run whenever there's a new entry. We just need to indicate the base, the table, and the view we want to use. Now we'll test by selecting choose where to start start manually, and picking a record. Then we'll click Run Once, and we can see that Make found a record. Throughout this tutorial, we'll keep using this same method to test the scenario. Next, we'll create a new Harvest module and select Create a Client. There are only three options we need to fill in here, name, address, and currency. We'll fill in name and address with data from Airtable, and we'll set our currency to always be in USD. There's one more option hidden behind Show Advanced Settings. We can set the client as active, archived, or empty, and we'll choose active. Now we test again, and it's a success. If we open up Harvest, we can confirm that the new client is right there. Next, we're gonna have our scenario create a new project. We could use the create a project module, but we might want to set some projects to fixed fee. In the pre-built create a project module, there's no option for that. So instead, we're going to select make an API call. Whenever making an API call or using the HTTP module, refer to the relevant docs to find out what information you need to provide. In this case, We'll do a quick search and pull up the Harvest API docs. As the helper text indicates, we just need to add a relative path to the URL field rather than the full URL. So we'll enter projects and select post as the method. In the headers, you should see that a key value pair for content type is already filled in. You can leave that as is and add a new key value pair for authorization. The key will be authorization and the value will be bearer, followed by an access token. To get your Harvest access token, go to this URL, create a new token and copy it. Then paste it in after bearer. Just be sure to leave one space between bearer and the start of your token. If we were making a GET request, we could use a query string to filter the results, but we can just leave it blank for now in this POST request. Now we'll fill out the body of our request. 
The text here needs to follow JSON formatting and include every required attribute. To see which fields are required for the project object, we check Harvest's API docs. As you're filling out the body, you can use data from previous steps for dynamic content. So in this case, our scenario will fill out a unique client ID and project name each time it runs, rather than using a static value. Finally, we'll add the two optional attributes that we couldn't access in the pre-built project module, is fixed fee and fee. We'll fill in both of those with data from Airtable. We'll test the scenario again and everything looks good. Over in Harvest, we can see the project was created and it's already set to fixed fee. This scenario is a good start, but it's not very flexible. What happens if we add a new project to this Airtable base for an existing client? The automation will try to create the client again and encounter an error. We need to add logic to handle likely use cases and there's a very easy way to do this. After the create a client step, we'll add a module to update the Airtable record that triggered this automation to run. Then we'll add the harvest ID into the harvest ID column. Now we'll add a router from the flow control menu. This first path will run if the harvest ID field in Airtable is blank and will create a new client accordingly. If the ID field is not empty, then the automation will run the second path using the provided ID. Conditional logic can be a little tedious to set up, but it makes your automations much more useful in the real world. Now you're all set to start automating harvest projects in Make. Between Make's pre-built modules and customizable API calls, you can automate nearly any workflow you want using Make. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook and find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the description down below. And as always, don't forget, keep the flow.